Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back of his Teardown Lab. You will remember the TS100 soldering iron I bought, and you haven't seen this, but I've made this thing that I found on Thingiverse, and it's a really groovy holder. Look at that. But that's not what I want to show you. I want to show you something that came in this, which is an Amazon packet, which came in this, is the packet that it came in, and it is this, which is a soldering iron tip. But it's not for a TS100, it's for a T12. And the reason I got it is because it's cheap. It was way cheaper. The, the standard T, um, T100, TS, sorry, TS100 tips um, are about 12 quid, and this thing was three quid, so I thought I'd give it a go. And it came with this really cool, look at that, looking tip. So it looks like you can get in and dirty when you want to touch up those little bits on the PCB that are hard to reach. Now, you can see there's a huge difference, though, in the handle length, and that... That's going to be a problem, but I think if you had to, you could probably 3D print something. And if you compare it to the standard tips, yeah, it's definitely a different length. So I want to see if it'll work if we can shove one in. Because if it works if we can shove one in, we could probably 3D print something or get something out of silicone and make it work so we don't get burnt. So I'm going to use the tool that came with the TS100 to take the standard tip off. And by the way, I really like this. I've got... Um, I think I'm quite used to this. I don't think I'm going to go back to my standard soldering station anytime soon. The downside uh, I did find on this though was that it doesn't have the thermal mass. So sometimes if you're hitting something a little bit um, heavy, heavy duty, it takes a bit of time to warm up. So looking at that, by the way, that does look totally compatible electrically. Uh, I can show you, I didn't do a teardown of this last time, although I have for my own interest, of course, uh, performed surgery on this and had a look inside. It wasn't particularly, there you go. I was gonna say it wasn't particularly easy to get off because this screw on here doesn't seem that convincing, but you can see what's inside of this one. I'll run it with the lid off. Um, it has the contacts for the tip and there's loads of microcontrols and stuff. These are super clever. Look at that, it's lovely jubbly. So let's see what happens though if you try to put one in and I'm looking here there is indeed though a backstop in the lid there is a little backstop right there I'm going to try it with just the lid not screwed on but just pressed on to make sure we don't shove it too far and then we're going to take the lid off to see what it looks like when it gets that far so I think I'm going to hold it there like that so that's as far as it wants to go so let's take that off now oh and that's perfect isn't it you can see from the contacts that's pretty much where you want it to be, but ooh, it's going to be like those memes you see of people holding the song. Ow! Um, yeah, that might be a bit long <laughs> to operate. But before we worry about that, let's put the power on it and see if we can just get it working. I'm pretty sure it's going to run. I, I, if, I don't see any reason that if you are... Uh, a manufacturer of soldering things that you would design these electrically any different. Uh, this is a good point to make actually. If you could get to this point though where you can't shut your uh, doodad, which could be a lot of you, have a look. Inside you'll see there that brass ring. That's part of that mechanism here and that has to be pushed really far forward otherwise it's not going to shut and it's going to shut on the wrong side of this bit of plastic. So take care if you have a look inside like me which you don't really need to do, take care, because you're going to need to push that in to even shut this lid properly. It's going to try to go on the wrong side of that and cause you all manner of grief. Um, in fact, I think I'm probably going to just shut the video off because I think I had to play with this for a long time. I had to get a tool that could go through both sides at once and stuff and mess around with it. I don't know if it's mine just does that or if they're all a bit like that. I can't see how they're not all like that. Um, just before I give up, let's try this. I'm going to put the tool right through the Allen key, push it forward. Let's see if that gets it. Yes, it does. That worked okay. Whew! I'm glad I did a service there. It's like a public service announcement. This was a public service announcement. Let's get that in. Right, let's zoom out, shove that in. Bang, and it's in all the way. I'm gonna Ooh. hit the microphone there, so you might have got a bit of a weird sound effect and turn that. 
So that's pinched in, plugged in, plugged in. Oh, it's on. And it seems to be heating up. It's certainly reporting that it's heating up. So it says we're at 326. Seem to be does seem to be jumping up and down a bit, but that's probably okay. Oh. I'm smelling heat. Oh, there we go. We've got some. We got some heat are coming. Let's grab something that we can mess around with. So we've got whatever that is. Although it's really long, I don't think at the moment it's that bad. As long as you don't have to put too much pressure on the tip, I think you could use it. Right, it's not doing the business for me, so I'm going to put this up to maximum, which is currently 450, this firmware allows. Admittedly, this is probably not the uh, optimum type of tip for doing a massive chunk on an ATX power supply. But there you go, it's done it, it's got in there, it's done it eventually. I would consider this though to be more of a working on a microcontroller. Um, probably something more like that, probably something really though, more a surface mount, SOIC, something like that. But let's try it on this little regulator. Again, it's measuring 447 on the handle. Again, very tip. Tell me, guys, you do a lot of soldering. How do you get it hot to the very, very tip? You can see there, it's not doing anything. But if I put it at the base of the tip, I'm going to get meltage. It's a very weird and annoying scenario. So without the uh, th thermocouple, look at that. That's, I, don't, I don't think it's working. Mm, I think that the thermocouple in the iron is calibrated differently. So the iron thinks it's at 447, but I don't think it is. You saw there how the solder just broke. I'm not even sure it's hot anymore. <laughs> have I broke my iron? Let's have a look here. Get out of that. Make sure it's up to temperature. Oh, and it's going again. That was weird. So I've never seen that before. It's almost like the iron went into sleep mode. No, that's okay now. That's good. He's a good one. And it is melting right to the tip now. Again, though, stopping. Yep. Yeah. So all I can say about this, uh, this is a T12 something, a T12 JL02 tip. It does look good and it might be really good for doing your little uh, surface mount chips, but yeah, probably not so good on this, but it does work in the iron. I'm going to test now. It says it's 450. Ow. So it starts to get hot there, where it's, you can see this coloration here. Not so bad. So I think you could have something here, something insulated that you could use this as a standard uh, iron. Whether or not though it's worth it over the cost of the standard tips, uh, probably not as a cost measure, but if it's an availability one, it's certainly something you might want to consider. So there you go. Let me know what you think of this foot long soldering iron tip.